Hi everyone, I'm uh, Dr. Patrick Mills from uh, JJC of course. Uh, this is uh, a quick video about undergraduate research. We have four professors who do undergraduate research, uh, NSCI 296 and 297, okay, in the areas of physics, chemistry, which is me, um, molecular biology, and ecology, okay. Depending on your, you know, area of interest, you should uh, contact them directly, okay. That's Send me an email and I'll put you in touch if you're interested in those areas, aside from chemistry slash biochemistry, which is me. Now, what you're watching here, <laughs> all those carp jumping out of the water, um, those are silver carp, okay? And you may or may not know, but silver carp are an invasive, an, an invasive species, okay, which are threatening basically the food web in the uh, Mississippi Basin, okay? So, uh, one of the main areas where this is a problem is actually the Illinois River and Joliet, believe it or not, is at the kind of the point of the spear because that's where the electric barrier is that prevents these fish entering Lake Michigan and it would be an environmental disaster <laughs> if these fish entered Lake Michigan. Now, <clears throat> why are they troublesome? Because essentially they're what's called planktivores, which means they eat the tiny, tiny, tiny creatures in the water. So you see kind of a greeny tinge to the water, that's kind of tiny creatures, and they get filtered out, right? So they're basically filtering out all the food that the baby fish from other species would generally eat. So, you know, in essence, they're killing baby fish, native species in their cribs. And if you look at the biomass for the Illinois River, 90% of the biomass, that's 90 out of every 100 pounds of fish, is silver carp. So they're a big, big problem they've essentially taken over. Now, how I'm involved in this with my students is that we're developing Asian carp attractants. My personal area of expertise is amino acid stimulation, okay? So I can take certain amino acids and their natural kind of non-harmful chemicals and mix them the correct amount and the correct ratio is they actually make these fish feed, okay? So you can actually stimulate a feeding response from cyprinoid species. And we've been working with the USGS on this problem for a couple of years now. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple of slides. Um, here, <laughs> of course, the, the main idea is to remove as many fish as possible from the river to kind of mitigate the damage they're doing. And uh, so we can literally go out in the summer and catch, you know, if you can see from the pictures here, you know, seven, eight hundred pounds of fish in an afternoon. And, that, and that's just the tip of the iceberg, okay? So we're kind of fighting a losing battle. And my research is really aimed at kind of trying to catch fish more efficiently. Okay, now some of you may be a bit squeamish about these fish, uh, but they are actually, you know, they are used for other things. So they're used for pet food and fertilizer and things like that. So they are actually harvested and used for, I guess, for reasonably good purposes, okay? And this, of course, you know, <laughs> it's the nature of, you know, the environment, right? It's the dog-eat-dog -dog world out there, and we're just kind of leveling the playing field for the other species, okay? So it's kind of a very big um, project right now, particularly in Joliet, okay? So uh, we can see the boat there with, I don't know, 500 pounds of fish in it, and the person holding a fish is uh, our collaborator. That's actually Robin Calfrey, who is the lead scientist for invasive species research at the uh, USGS, United States Geological Survey. The USGS actually oversee all the state DNRs. So we actually go out on the river with Robin and her crew and also the, the Illinois DNR. And we assist in the capture of these fish and the testing of our invention, okay, which we'll get to in a little bit. Okay, so there are, and we'll talk about this more later also, for students involved in the project, there are actually opportunities to intern at the government lab with Robin down in Missouri, okay, so that's kind of a, a big, a big honor for those students, all right. Now what we're dealing with, so the picture shows the types of invasive carp that are out there, okay. Um, the main ones in the Illinois River are the silver, which is literally 90% of the fish we see, and big head, which is the other 10%. Uh, grass carp have been in the United States for a long time. If you ever see, if you ever walk over the bridge, not so much anymore at JJC, but it used to be we had grass carp to control the weed in the lake there, and uh, you'd see the occasional large fish. And, uh, you know, they grow pretty big and they eat weed. Again, they, they are a nuisance, but they're not as... Uh, problematic as the big head or the silver. And the other one that's just coming onto the, onto the radar is the black carp, which is a um, very big fish. 111 pounds one was caught recently down in uh, Cape Girardeau, just you know where the Illinois and the uh, Mississippi meet. No, sorry, that's the, uh, the Ohio and the Mississippi meet there. Okay, so um, 
that's caught in a, that's caught in a fisherman's net, and they eat mussels, right? And they are actually introduced to kind of try and control another invasive species uh, of mussel, and, and they of course eat everything. So now they're eating all the indigenous species of snails and mussels, so they're now a problem. It's kind of a common theme. We bring in a fish to do a certain job, it then does its job too efficiently or escapes. <laughs> So we're basically trying to control the numbers of these fish. Okay, we also recently, um, this year we're actually moving towards a grass carp project and we hope, I'll talk more about white and in a moment, we hope to have um, some of these grass carp actually purchased and put into a, a lake for study at JJC. So we'll, we'll see that as that goes this year. Okay. Now, talking of which, studies at JJC... Um, our indoor lab, if you wish, our lab in the uh, Natural Sciences Department, as you can see from the picture, it's four 55-gallon tanks where it's a very controlled environment. We can test our solutions of fish attractant in these tanks and just monitor the behavior of the fish in the tanks. And we've been pretty successful with that. We've actually been able to fine-tune certain uh, threshold criteria of concentration where fish activate and then too much when they turn off, find the window of um, stimulation. So this is kind of a little bit technical right now. But, you know, students actually do meaningful research and, um, you know, they work in the lab. Now, with the COVID situation, we may or may not have access to the lab, maybe two students at a time in the lab, but that's okay because, as we can see from the next picture, we do actually have a field study location, White and Dorf, it's near the Joliet Speedway. As you can see from the picture, we have installed a dock from which we can uh, broadcast feed from those two fish feeders into the pond. I mean, we can also study them with cameras and other things. This gives me the great excuse to show you my toys, right? So we have at our disposal this. This is a yellow submarine called Ringo. Get it, right? Okay, Ringo has a 4K camera on the front, allows us to kind of follow fish around and record their behavior, which is awesome. Okay, we also have for aerial shots because we're interested in fish feeding on the surface we also have this all right this is a mavic air 2 drone which gets very good footage okay we also have another submarine we probably have about a dozen cameras all together which allows us to um examine what the fish are doing kind of in situ okay because what happens in a tank might be different than what happens in a pond right so we want to kind of confirm our findings we record behavior in the fish tanks and they go crazy eating our food how are they doing in the pond with the same food so we'll take a look at that okay so it's kind of statistical based how many bites per second or for a fishing actually fishing for them how many fish per minute or whatever okay all right let me get that on camera to prove it here's some close-ups of the apparatus so the first one is um a close up of the tank as you can see we have kind of a hollowed out area and we dribble the solutions of interest in there. Now the solutions are denser than water, so they kind of settle into that bowl there. And as you can see, the fish kind of enter the bowl and peck around, and we can uh, literally film that and you know compare a blank, which is no food in the bowl, to when we put kind of flavoring and amino acid solutions in the bowl and see how many pecks per minute we get. And we can kind of do a graph of concentration versus activity, which eventually gets turned into posters and students present at conferences and we publish papers so this this work does end up with um, some meaningful results okay which is good uh, the, the next picture here is we also you know you may be asking yourself well how do you get the stuff in the water we actually compress it into kind of um, pellets almost right so like compressed blocks they're about the size of a hockey puck as you can see from the picture we own a, a 10 ton hydraulic press which we kind of have a mold there and we basically squeeze um, the, the ingredients with a filler, essentially, with the soluble filler into a, a, a tablet, a large tablet, which then gets thrown into uh, either a net for the, for the USGS studies or directly into the pond or perhaps hung in a net. Different ways you can introduce it into the water, but um, it's basically designed to dissolve over up to two days, right, in the water and slowly attracts fish to an area which then can be removed. Okay, so it's an attractant, basically. So, you know, in essence, what do we do? We design, test, and implement carp attractants. That's our uh, our goal. Now, the theory behind this has taken me probably half a lifetime to figure out. It's something I've been thinking about since I was, believe it or not, 18. Okay, and if you're interested, just drop me a line, details at the end. Uh, I can send you various papers I've written on the subject. Uh, <laughs> start with the easy ones, move to the harder ones if you're interested. Okay, so moving on, let's take a look at the next one. 
this is our research group. Over the years, we've been pretty successful. We've had some pretty um, good research students, as you can see from the pictures there. <laughs> Happy smiling bunch. <laughs> okay, I actually worked occasionally with Professor Zerniak. Uh, Professor Zerniak actually is branching out now and doing his own project with stimulants for a crayfish, which is kind of a, an offshoot from this work. So we're actually growing. Okay, and uh, the students themselves. Um, if we look at the pictures, we see some of our kind of voluminary ones. If you look at this other picture here, we see uh, Sean, John, and Emilio with myself. And that person on the right there is actually Congressman Bill Foster. So Bill Foster is actually really interested in what we're doing, as a, as are several other local uh, politicians. Okay, uh, So, you know, it's, it's big profile. It's kind of big news. And it's, it's actually brought quite a lot of... Um, dollars in, we get money from the government to do this work, it's got a lot of exposure for the college, okay, so not only would you get to go and work in a government lab should you apply for the project, you'd also probably get to meet and hang out with powerful politicians, for whatever, whatever that's worth. Right? <laughs> okay, now, talking about the USGS, so every summer we send up to six students down to the USGS. United States Geological Survey and as I mentioned they're, they're kind of the invasive species kind of researchers for the government right and um, Santa Missouri is in Columbia okay which is kind of uh, north kind of in the middle of the state okay and um, they have a wonderful facility and we send the students down there for four to six weeks and this is this is awesome for them and the students we've done it once and we're the only community college ever to have sent students last Two we sent were the first two, and uh, here they are. Show the picture. Oh, there are. I'm just looking at my slides as we go here. There are. Uh, there's John, John Ragoni, and Justina Revela. Okay, Justina's still around. John actually went off to college at the four-year school, and uh, but Justina's still around. You may see her around campus. Should we ever get back? And in the middle is the lady <laughs> from the boat who was holding the fish. That's Robin Calfrey, our uh, main contact there. And we, they work in her lab, and uh, they did some really, really good work, which will probably result for them in a publication each, which is really good. So if you want to kind of really pad your resume, which is great if you go in pharmacy, dental, medical school, right, even graduate school, and undergraduate publication, sets you apart from everyone else, okay? And that's certainly possible. And with a kind of a high-profile lab like that, even better. Okay, and that's the lab on the inside. As you can see, there's um, a number of different study tanks. So there's all different ways to study the fish. It's one under a very controlled environment, and it's kind of high-profile, high-expense research. Okay, no expenses spared at the USGS for the Asian Carp Project. Okay, other other government projects are getting cut right now, which you may kind of heard of. <laughs> that's politics, but the Asian Carp Project is going strong because it's of super national importance. Okay, in fact the barrier at Joliet is being built right now, an upgrade, and it's a $750 million upgrade. <laughs> okay, so that's how much money they're throwing at this project. All right, so finally then, uh, just to wrap up, if you're interested in the project, okay, it runs um, on Fridays in the fall and spring, okay, and then also on Fridays in the summer, okay. Now we're coming out of COVID right now, and for fall 2020, we're active, okay. So if you're really interested, drop me a line, I'll put my address here, okay. And if you're interested, I can send you those um, papers we I talked about, okay. You can read them, and if you're really interested, I can add you to the course. The course is uh, by permission of the instructor only, and the prereq is Chemistry 101 or Bio 151, but that's for the science stuff, right? If you're interested in a building project, we can talk more about that. So, you know, how to adapt one of these, you know, one of these submersibles if you're kind of into the kind of the RV thing. Hey, if you've got an engineering background, I can make exceptions to those prereqs. You just have to have uh, expertise in different areas. Those areas would be electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, and also IT. So if you're into programming and things like that, that's a very big part of what we do as well. We do something called you know big data uh, kind of investigations with big data sets. Um, yeah, so if you're interested, drop me a line, and I will send you back the information. If you're still interested, Asked to be added, and I'll happily add you to the course. I only have room for four students per semester, and it's kind of on a first come, first serve basis. But you do have to get my permission. You can't just register, okay? So make sure you do get back to me. If you're interested in any questions, just send me an email. All right, I'll leave you with some more fish pictures. <laughs>